Separate us from the love of Christ. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword. And it is written, for thy sake are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature should be able to separate us Amen. from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. And I'd like to use for a talk for a few minutes, I am determined and I will persevere. You may be seated. We, as the pastor was saying earlier, we are living in a day and time that things are happening all around us. We find people who, uh, we come to church, but the church is not in us. We come to church with no expectation of God doing anything. We come in one way and we believe we're going to leave out basically the same way. Church has become a tradition, but the apostle Paul, uh, Paul knew something. He knew that it took God to make it. He was determined in the, uh, in the way that he was going, that he was going to persevere no matter what happened. Paul went through a whole lot of things. Now, when it first started off, we understand that Paul was an educated man. He sat on the Sanhedrin court. Paul was a man that knew the law, and he used the law for the favor of the people. When he persecuted God's people, he was not trying to do anything wrong. He was not trying to be vicious. He was uh, persecuting them out of what he knew in the law. But what he knew, he knew well. So God had to first bring about a change in Apostle Paul. We know the story of how he was on his way to Damascus and there shone a light upon him. And the Bible said it was brighter than the noonday sun because it wasn't the sun as we think, the S-O-N, but I'm sorry, the S-U-N, but it was the S. O-N shining upon the apostle and the Bible said there came a voice and it began to talk to him. It said, Saul, why persecuted thou me? Now, Paul asked a question. He said, who are you, Lord? And the voice said, I am Jesus whom thou persecute. Why are you kicking against the prick? What is the prick? The prick is the truth. The truth of what? Who Jesus is. Now, this set Paul on a different course. Uh, he was going to Damascus uh, that he would get a letter that anybody speaking of Jesus uh, that he would be allowed to now throw him into jail uh, but when he got down to Damascus on a street called Street and after three days a man by the, Anani the name of Ananias uh, came and laid hands upon him uh, and the Bible said that his eyes were open uh, because when he had got up on his way to Damascus, uh, he was blind, uh, but now blinded uh, in the natural. Uh, he's now on a street called Street uh, because God had to get his attention. Uh, in our lives, God had to get our attention uh, before he can ever speak to us. Uh, we go around and we say, I know the Lord. Uh, but when Jesus began to speak to us, uh, we find, we say, well, who is that? Uh, is that God? Uh, and we begin to say, Lord, is that you? Uh, just like Paul did. Uh, but when Paul now uh, was down uh, on the street called Straight, uh, and Ananias came down uh, and laid hands on him, uh, and his eyes came open. Uh, Paul saw things in a different way. Uh, he was now not called Saul. Uh, his name was changed, uh, and Saul now be Paul, uh, became now uh, an ambassador uh, to Christ Jesus. Uh, the same man that was persecuting uh, is now a chosen vessel uh, that's going to go forth and tell the people uh, about the man that we serve. Now the Bible says that he suffered many things. We know now that he was a time he was stoned at Lystra for preaching Jesus. He suffered now beaten by rods for preaching Jesus. He was thrown now into prison for preaching Jesus. But Paul still kept the course. People talked about him, but he still told Jesus. They began to tell him, look, we'll keep you, uh, but he still said, look, uh, I'm going now to teach Jesus. Uh, Paul 
was so educated. He wrote through two thirds of the New Testament and it still stands good today. Why? Because he followed Jesus. He was determined and he was going to persevere in what he knew and what Paul knew. He was ready now to tell the people. The Bible says now that after he now had taught, it came a time that Paul was put on a ship and as Paul was sailing, we know the story of how now a storm came up and Paul, so he found himself on an island and the Bible said there were barbarian people there and aunties on the island. The Bible said he was out picking up sticks. He was now going to build a fire and the Bible said when he went to throw in now the sticks into the fire, a viper came out and attached itself to his hand, but that didn't stop Paul. Paul shook it off in the fire because Paul had a work to do. There's some people that try now to attach themselves to you. They don't mean you no good. They are vipers. They're trying to wipe you out, but aren't you glad you got a God who's shown you how to shake it off in the fire of the Holy Ghost. There's some people that try to stop you from doing the work of the Lord. But have you learned how to shake it off and get up and go on? They tell you they're going to shut doors in your face. But God said I open up doors that no man can close. They tell you you're never going to amount to anything. But God said I call you my son. And that's enough. They tell you brother Joey you're never going to get no further than down here. Thought they knew you when. But ain't you glad you got a God that don't run through everything into the sea and call you something else. They may call you out of your name, but aren't you glad you got a name in heaven that no man can run? Why? Because now you're persevering. They told you you going to fail, but God said I called you to prosper. In the midst of your enemy, they call you another gold coin. Why? Because you determined you won't make it. You determined you will not make it you determined you will not go on with Jesus. You determined you will not do his will, and you will persevere. The Bible tells me about a man by the name of Jeremiah. And we know the story of Jeremiah. It starts out telling about him. And it tells now that old Jeremiah heard a word. God began to tell him, Before I formed you in your mama's bed, I knew you. Before I brought you forth, I'd already sanctified you. And I ordained you a prophet. Old Jeremiah, he began to say, He said, nothing but a child. God said, don't say you a child. You go and tell what I told you to tell. And he said, Jeremiah, I'm going to be with you. Don't look at their faces. They might look at you crazy, but know this one thing. I'm still with you. Now Jeremiah had a word to deliver. And the word seemed hard. Because he was telling the people, look, we're going to be taken down to Babylonian exile. And if you don't go down there, some are going to die by the sword. Some are going to die in famine. And some of you all are going to die in disease. And now, there were those that said that old Jeremiah, he's preaching a word that's not a fire. They begin to kick against it. They begin to say, he just saying things to make the people very hard melt. Well, then God told Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, go down to the potter's house, and I want you now to buy a jar. Take that jar and go now to the city. And the Bible said that here come some leaders. There were those that 
heaven following him when he got to the city. The Bible said he took the jar and God said throw it down on the ground. When he threw it, he broke it. God said tell the people that that jar was shattered and destroyed. I'm going to destroy the city. I'm going to call the city to fall into the hand of the enemy. The enemy is going to prosper against them and they're going to find themselves in hard times. He said, Jeremiah, tell them I'm not going to be with them. Jeremiah began to give them a word. Then he got back up and he went to Jerusalem. He began to tell the people, thus saith the Lord, God has said he's not going to be with you because of the sins that you you have committed. The Bible said now there was a priest by the name of Pesha. And Pesha was a priest that was over the house. And the Bible said he took old Jeremiah, put him in stocks, took him up now to the high gate of Benjamin. And the Bible said he beat him and he left him there for a day. But the Bible said on the next day when they brought old Jeremiah Jeremiah down. Jeremiah began to tell him, he said, you say your name now is Pesha, but that's not what God said. God then changed your name to Omex above, which means terror is with you. He said, you won't be a terror to the people. You're going to be a terror to your friends, and you're going to be a terror unto yourself. God's going to call you to die among your friends as well as everybody else who follow behind you. Now the Bible should now, the old patient said something in his heart against old Jeremiah. And the Bible said that did Jeremiah, he began to talk to the Lord. He said, Lord, he said, I feel like you have forgot about me. I feel like you have betrayed me, and I don't feel like speaking in your name no more. But then something happened, and old Jeremiah said, look, his word is shut up in my heart like fire. He began again to tell God about his troubles. But though Jeremiah, he was still determined that he was going to speak. He was going to persevere. Even though the people may not like it. Even though the people may come against him. He had a God that he had to please. So the Bible tells me that old Jeremiah, he kept on speaking. Well, it came a time, the king Zedekiah, he said now unto the, the priest, he said, look, he said, whatever y'all do, Jeremiah is in your hands. Well, here comes Peshat, the same now priest, and he began to say, look, he said, that man Jeremiah, he's calling the very people's heart to faint because he's telling them that they got to surrender unto the uh, to now uh, the people of Babylon uh, and if you don't uh, they gonna take him down there uh, and they gonna be slaves uh, they gonna die uh, if they stay in this city uh, the sword uh, is gonna take them out uh, if they stay in this city uh, and the Bible said uh, uh, King said King to the uh, he said now uh, he said Jeremiah uh, is in your hand uh, do with him uh, what you want uh, so he reached over and he gave him now to Pacer, Pacer's son and the men and the Bible said they took him into the inner court and when they took Jeremiah into the inner court they threw him down in a cistern. It was a well that had nothing in it but mud and the Bible said when they threw him in old Jeremiah he began to sing have you ever felt like you're sinking and you're doing all you can? Have you ever felt like you're at your wit's end and you're giving God all you got? Oh, Jeremiah, he was in the 
mug, y'all, that he was seeking. But old old Jeremiah, he had an advocate. And his advocate name was Ebed-Melech. And the Bible said that Ebed-Melech, he went to King Zedekiah. He said, oh, King, he said, it's through old Jeremiah down in the pit. And old Jeremiah gonna die when there's no food left in the city. The Bible said that when old King Zedekiah heard what was going on, he told him, look right here, go get him out. Get him up out of there. When they went now to get him out, the Bible said they had rags in hand. They had ropes in hand. Because he been Melik that went now under the treasury and got some rags. He hollered down now to old Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, put the rags under your arms. We're going to put the rope around you and we're going to pull you out. Well, I had to think about it, Brother Joel, because now he was seeking. But the one thing he did, he had his hand lifted. Because if his hand wasn't lifted, they couldn't have got him out. In the midst of him sinking, he still had a praise. In the midst of him going through, he still had a praise. And in the midst of his praise, God delivered him out of his situation. I'm going to ask you, do you have a praise in the midst of your going through? Do you have a praise? Hold on, your help is already 
for years ago. Mervyn and I lost everything. And I do mean everything. He was working a full-time job and a part-time job. I was working a full-time job. And sister, we lost everything. We lost our home. We lost our cars. We was two weeks from being homeless. And God moved. He gave us a trailer. And that was the best. We just felt like you couldn't get no better than that. Because if you never had nothing, anything is good. He blessed us with an old car that my teenage brother at the time had. Anybody knows if you get a car after a teenager had it about four years, what you drive? We would go to go up a hill, you'd hit the gas, have to take your foot off, hit it again, to get enough speed to go over a hill. But it beat walking. Right. And we was grateful right. for what God done. Come on, Cece. We didn't know why we were going through, but we just knew God had it. Yes. We didn't have food. We ate at our ex-pastor's house. Many times we ate their leftovers. But we were thankful for that. Yes, yes. And people thought we were <laughs> foolish because we were still going to prayer service every night. Mm -hmm. We were still going to church two times a Sunday, every Sunday. We were in church seven days a week. God, you serve Jesus. And we said, God, if we don't have nothing, we got you. That's it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We, we came out of prayer service one night, and God told me, he said, I'm going to give you all, I'm going to make a way that y'all get a house. I said, okay, God. God said, start packing up your stuff. Mm -hmm. I went to every place I could find and got brown boxes and start packing up our stuff. God, you sir, Lord. Time went by, months went by, and nothing, sister. So I started taking stuff out and putting it back. God, I put the boxes all together. I was going to take them outside, and I was going to just set them on fire. God told me, God said, don't burn your blessings. I took the boxes back, packed them back up. Yes. I stepped out on faith, Brother Joy. Hallelujah. I called a realtor. Praise the Lord. I went to looking for houses. Thank you, Jesus. He took me to a certain place because he just knew I didn't have no money. I said, I'm not living over there. He said, where do you want to live? I said, I told him what street. He looked at us kind of funny. Remember, everyone's out there looking at houses. Didn't have no money. Didn't have no credit. But we had Jesus. Right. When we found the house we wanted, we told the realtor, said, that's it. He said, how much down payment you got? I said, we don't have no money. I said, but make us an appointment with the bank. He made us an appointment. I went in there, didn't have no money, didn't have no credit, but I had Jesus. Right. I sat at the table Come on. and God gave us favor. Things began to work out and we walked out of that place homeowners. That's it. Amen. Praise the Lord. We worked. Yeah. We worked the regular jobs. We couldn't have worked two jobs and a part-time and couldn't make it. Dropped off the part-time because it stopped. Took the two jobs and paid off the house beforehand and then turn around and gave that one to our son and turn around <laughs> a couple of years, uh, two years ago and bought, God allowed us to buy another house for us to live in because God is God. God told us. He said every car you get, he said don't sell it, give it to somebody else in need. Every time we give a car, we give it away. And every time we give it away, God blesses us abundantly Actually, in our church with something else because he's God.
in the palm of his hand. Amen. 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 Amen.